Let's look at some annular tears on MRIs. I've shown you this uh, before, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But here, where you see my pointer, is a side view of the low back. And what you'll notice here is a normal disc. You have the bone above, or the vertebral body, similar below. And in between the two, you have the disc. Here you have that nice, bright area indicating hydration of the disc to distribute the pressure. Now let's move down to the disc below it. You'll notice that the disc is darker and that is called desiccation. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. What I want you to recognize is in the back where my white arrow is, right here where this black arrow is, notice that bright white spot. That is considered an annular tear. And you can see it here also. That bright white spot in the outer part of the disc or the periphery of the disc. And that is generally the area of the disc that has the majority of nerve fibers making it capable of transmitting pain. Now that doesn't mean that an annular tear in that area will always be painful but that it is capable of producing pain. You'll notice this disc here is nice and wide. This one here is a little bit thinner. That indicates desiccation as well or decreased height of the disc, which can compromise its ability to distribute load properly. On the left is a representation of the annular tear and once again you can see the little bright area here. Now sometimes these are not identified unless the quality of the MRI is excellent and that's something I haven't talked about that there can be a big difference in quality between different MRI scans. So to see this, the quality has to be excellent. On the right over here is a chart that you've seen before. It was that study of 33 studies that were combined over 3,000 patients. And right here at annular fissure or annular tear, you'll notice they're seen in 19% of asymptomatic 20-year-olds, 20% of asymptomatic 30-year-olds, and so on and so forth, up to 29% of asymptomatic 80-year-olds. As you look through that chart, you'll notice that annular tears aren't necessarily as common as other findings that would indicate uh, degeneration of the disc. So that when I look at this, especially in an age 20-year-old, if they have an annular tear, I am not conclusively sure that it would be the cause of someone's back pain, but given that they are much less common in younger age groups than older, I probably would place a little bit more emphasis on it as being a cause of someone's back pain. Now, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't heal with conservative care. That's a completely different discussion that goes way beyond what this presentation intends to do. Another piece of literature you see right here, this is a clinical update and it is about as up to date as you can get. You'll notice that not all these uh, scientific references come to the exact same conclusion, but you'll see where I have uh, highlighted in the bottom that this uh, update felt that annular tears are commonly identified in asymptomatic people and that how often those are seen ranges from a few percent to upwards of 20 percent depending on the study. Here's a, another paper, notice that it was done in 2016 and it looked at annular tears or what are called high intensity zone and what it found that 61 percent of the people with those annular tears had low back pain but 32% of patients without back pain had annular tears. And you'll notice that the prevalence rate of these annular tears is approaching 40% in people who have back pain 
and maybe 20% or so in those that are asymptomatic. Here's another study. Uh, the date is not put on it, but I believe it was 2017. And I'm not going to read through this. I just put it there for your reference so that you can see numerous studies have indicated that annular tears may be symptomatic and other times they're not, but it's very difficult to correlate annular tears exactly with low back pain. So here is where I stand on it right now. And after I show you this, I'm going to illustrate a few of the much more recent uh, pieces of literature that I've found. And you'll see that it comes to pretty much the same conclusion. And so annular tears occur in people who have back pain and those who don't. They seem to be a little bit present more often in those with back pain. And as a general rule, these annular tears will increase with age, whether you have back pain or not. And that's pretty much true for almost any abnormal finding that you could see on an MRI. An important concept here is there is no clear way that an MRI can differentiate between a symptomatic and an asymptomatic annular tear. Now, whether you have symptoms or not, it's important to also understand that an annular tear, just applying logic, is going to alter the load-bearing capacity of the spine. So now let's look at some of the recent pieces of research that have been written about annular tears. This study is fairly recent, done in 2018. I'm putting it here just to show you that the current research on annular tears hasn't changed a whole lot as compared to what you've just seen. This looked at over 600 patients and over 3,000 discs. And you'll notice down here in the conclusion, and you can read it for yourself, but the main finding was that the annular tear indicated a part of the natural history of disc degeneration, but not an actual source of low back pain. Now, what they did find, similar to what uh, we've talked about before is the presence of annular tears increased with age. They were seen in a relatively low percentage of the patients in their second and third decade and a much higher percentage of people in the sixth decade. They also found that annular tears were seen in 36% of those with back pain and almost 27% of those without back pain. Again, quite similar to what you have already seen. This will be the last example from the research on annular tears. It appeared in the International Journal of Orthopedics in 2019, and it's one of the most, if not the most recent, publication that I found on annular tears. Notice that it shows similar findings to what we've already talked about, and that is that annular tears do occur in people both with and without back pain. For example, it shows, or this paper talks about, the clinical significance of these annular tears is not conclusive, that the finding is not sensitive or specific for back pain, and that population-based studies have shown conflicting results regarding the prevalence of annular tears in both people with back pain and those without back pain. So now you know what an annular tear looks like and that it alters the load-bearing capability of the low back. But you also know that just because you see it does not mean that it is the source of your pain or even if it is, that doesn't mean that you need any type of aggressive treatment to fix it. These are things that you most likely would be able to handle on your own. As with everything else in these presentations, I have several references that I would be happy to make available to you. All you need to do is reach out to me and ask for it.